Well, I just thought I'd do a quick video on testing old air conditioners. You know, you might pick up a second-hand unit like this and works fine, might want to install it type thing. But I just thought I'd just point something out, just keep something in mind. Now, today's a really hot day, it's about 40 degrees, and you would most likely wire up a unit for tests, such as the way I've wired this one up. The polarity is correct, which is important. And um, it's earth, which is even more important. Now, I'm actually using a crimp plug. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But just keep in mind a couple of things. One, the cord that I've had this plugged in is 25 meters long. And it's probably about one mil squared, you know, flex. So there's gonna be significant current limitation on this unit. Now the max current draw on this unit in which would be the high heat mode because it also has a heating element as well as the refrigeration reverse cycle is 25 amps. So if you're trying to drag 20, 25 amps through, in this case, this core is like it's 0.75, it's really thin. Like you should pretty much use it for really light loads, like not even, no more than a hairdryer basically. So when it's a really hot day, the head pressure of this unit is gonna go really, really high. How high? Well, let's say it's 40 odd degrees. It could, it could be 400 PSI on the high side, which would be that line there's the discharge line. And that's the other side of it where it loops around the compressor. And uh, this is gonna try and drag a lot of current. So if you're gonna test a unit like this wide up this way, either connect it up with heavier cable or better yet fully have it installed use a licensed electrician and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna tell you not to wire up things yourself because clearly I do but you should have a working understanding of how electricity works how it propagates through a copper cable what electricity is basically if you can't answer that question you you shouldn't touch any electricity including low voltage DC batteries which can put out a lot of voltage keep in mind also at 240 volts is what we're supplied with but it's actually not it's now I know the the keyboard warriors are going to get really pissed about this but it's about 340 odd volts 360 maybe peak to peak yeah I haven't got the number in front of me and I suppose some smart smarty pants is going to have the numbers on the screen in front of them but yeah, 240 volts is the RMS value of the voltage. It's what we would base, you know, if it was DC, that's what it would work out to be. RMS is root mean square, if you didn't know that, so, yeah. So just a quick lesson in electricity and safety. Keep in mind that all of this is gonna be alive at mains potential. And uh, cases like the capacitors there, they do phase shift and you can get some, you can get some really high voltages compared to phase to phase for example because it's it's shifted so it's going to have a different value i've measured them and you can't you come up with funny values on those capacitors so yeah just be safe everyone and keep in mind this is a refrigeration system it runs r22 so the liquid side of this and the high well okay let's start with the liquid side which is going to be so that's the hot gas discharge side that goes into the condenser coil. So the condensed coil and this capillary tube is gonna be full of liquid refrigerant. This would be in the stage of condensing from a hot, uh, a superheated gas to a subcooled liquid. And basically, if you open any part of the high side, including this, you know, discharge line valve, this can actually have a pretty nasty effect. Refrigerant can cause frostbite, which could result in skin grafts and or amputation of affected digits. So, and keep in mind that on a hot day, this can be up to 500 PSI, especially if the condenser's a piece of crap that's never had any maintenance. So I just thought I'd put that out there because I've, I've been getting a lot of questions about refrigeration stuff lately. I'm not a good channel to learn about refrigeration because I'm still only learning myself. There are plenty of tradesmen that put up really good content and if you want to learn i i suggest you check out some of the channels on there um yeah there's dozens of channels i'm not going to list them i think in my recommended channels list there's a couple so yeah 
safety with refrigeration and refrigerant and uh, with electricity and uh, really if you're going to test this this way you should ideally be plugging this into something like a power board because that's going to have a thermal thermal basically protection it's going to have a what am i trying to say a bimetallic breaker current limiting breaker so usually in australia power boards and things are limited to the value the cord can handle which is 10 amps in this case so yeah you shouldn't be you shouldn't plug this straight into something that's got a 20 amp breaker on the other end of it because this wire is kind of melt it'll become a heating element not a cable so be safe everyone and if you don't know how to wire up this stuff i'm not going to tell you because i'm not a tradesman i'm just i'm a refrigeration enthusiast if you like it's a hobby and uh, I'm not going to be responsible for people who ordinarily wouldn't play with electricity to suddenly go out and start playing with compressors because all of this stuff is dangerous. The compressor is also a pressure vessel. So yeah, be safe.